Hi everyone, this video is going to discuss how to go from standard or factored form to the vertex form of a quadratic equation. Okay, the vertex form is really cool because if you look down here with me, you will see that a vertex form of a quadratic, if it's written like this, what you can find out very quickly when, it, when a quadratic is in this form is you will know where the vertex is. It will be located at h and k. So remember, it's the opposite sign that you see here in brackets, okay? And so if it's x minus 3, the vertex would be at 3. If this here said x plus 3, then the vertex would be, the x value, would be at negative 3. It's the opposite of what you see in the brackets. Sometimes I tell my students that the brackets always lie to us, okay? Anyway, the k, it's always telling the truth, so whatever number is on the end is our y value of the vertex, okay? So that's why vertex form is so nice, okay? So unfortunately, your textbook and your teacher will not be giving you uh, quadratics in vertex form. A lot of the time you're going to see them in this form here, the standard form of a quadratic, where it's written like this, or you might see it in factored form of a quadratic which looks like this where you have brackets and these are just three different forms and I have a summary of these three forms in more detail it's just another video but you can't fit everything into one video or it would take hours okay so if you just wanna check out the other videos on quadratics I have lots this one is just specifically gonna go from how to get from standard or factored form to vertex form how would you get to this form from these two if you are given these two okay as far as the value of a goes, just remember, generally you won't have to worry about the value of a. If they give you the value of a here or here, then you're good to go. You can use that exact same value for a right here when you do these questions. And we'll look at that with numbers in a little bit. But there's the odd situation, and it's kind of rare because your teacher won't give you that very often, where that's not true. And that is what this note at the, at the bottom is saying. The value of a is the same in standard, vertex, or factored form. That's great. And I wish it would end there. But it is not the same if the equation is of this form here, where you have things or coefficients or numbers in front of the x value, right here and here, or, yeah, right here and here. So I just want you to take that as a note. But on the other hand, I'm just saying that here because you might get a curveball and you might wonder why did he tell me this when I'm not getting the right answer. I just wanted to give you that little explanation. So method number one, sometimes you get a question like this and you're supposed to, this is in factored form, and you're supposed to get it into vertex form. Okay, here it's asking us to do that. Determine the vertex of this, then write the equation in vertex form. Well the quickest way to get the vertex of this equation is because this is in factored form, we know that this, this parabola is cutting through at negative 4 and positive 6. And I have videos on this exact thing. Just look for the video on how to, how to uh, graph using factored form. And you'll see, if you type in factored form, you will see I have long videos on this. But for now, I'm just kind of going quickly, okay? So the two x-intercepts or roots or zeros, the, the zeros are negative 4 and positive 6. So negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, there it is, and positive 6, 4, 5, 6, right there. We know it's a parabola opening upwards because the value of 2 in the front is positive. If that was a negative, it would be opening upside down, right? So the 2 has to be, has to do with how skinny or wide this parabola is opening, but we're not discussing that right now. We're just trying to get this thing into vertex form. So what is the vertex of this thing? How would we find the vertex? Well, what you would want to do is find the middle between these two zeros here. So we've got negative 4 here, and over here we have 6. And to find the middle between negative 4 and 6, all you have to do is add them, okay, and then divide by 2. So negative 4 plus 6 is equal to 2. And if you divide that in half or cut that in half, you get 1. That means our vertex is at 1. Right down here, the value of x would be 1. And then the y value, how far down we're going, all you have to do is plug that 1 back in here. Plug it back into this 
right here where you see X, plug the 1. Okay? Now, I, I guess I could try and write it out really quickly. Instead of X, I'm going to write 1. Instead of X, I'm going to write 1. And let's, let's multiply this all out here. So 2, 1 plus 4 is 5, 1 minus 6 is negative 5. So we know that the y value in this case is 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. So we know negative 50 is how low this thing is going. This parabola that I've drawn here is definitely not drawn to scale. It would be way down, okay? Negative 50 would be way down there. But if you go to Desmos and you punch this in, you will see that it's cutting through at negative 4 and 6, and the vertex is at 1 and negative 50. If you have time, try going to Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S, -S, the graphing calculator. Plug this in. It's an online free calculator, and you'll see that it's doing exactly what we're saying right here. It's really cool. It turns math into something more fun, and it becomes uh, just very enjoyable. <laughs> What a great subject. So I guess we're not quite done. We're supposed to write this in vertex form. So let's do that. I'll make a nice yellow pen here. So in vertex form, the 2 is our opening A value. Remember, in front of x, we don't have any numbers. So we know the 2 is going to be the A value. In vertex form, the x value goes right here. And remember, the brackets always lie to us. So it's going to be x minus 1. It's not x plus 1 like it might seem squared. If it wasn't for that squared, we would not have a parabola. And then on the end, you put minus 50. Okay, and this is vertex form. Okay, we are done this question. We have just changed it into vertex form. Let's go to another example. Sometimes we get it in standard form, like this, and we're supposed to change this into vertex form. Here it says determine the vertex of this. Okay. So there's, let's see, there's a few ways to do this. I think I'm just going to factor it. There are quicker ways. I'm just going to factor this thing. So let's factor. Um, OK, and I've gone too quickly here. Did you notice something? If we factor this thing, the very first thing you should do when you factor, and I have videos on this, OK, people? <laughs> I, I hate feeling like I'm going too quickly for people, and so I just want to let you know I have videos that go in small steps on all of this stuff, okay? So look at this. We can pull out a 3. We can factor out a 3 from these three terms here, this trinomial here. Okay, what's left? x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay, we've factored out the 3. Now let's, let's factor the rest. What numbers multiply to make negative 3, but add up to make negative 2? What numbers add or multiply to make negative 3? Well, there's only 2. There's 3 and 1. And what numbers add to make negative 2? Well, this, this 3 here is going to have to be negative. Because negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, blah, blah, blah. These are the two numbers we need, OK? minus 3 and plus 1. Now, we're still not done. All we've done so far is turn this thing into, we went from standard form to factored form first. And then we do exactly what I did on this first question. We had factored form here, and now we're going to do exactly what I did, except for I'm not going to draw a picture this time. Just for the sake of speed, we're going to find um, what is the vertex, okay? And the way to do that is say, well, this parabola is cutting through. The two zeros are at 3 and at negative 1. So 3 plus negative 1, we're going to add those up. We get 2. And then divide by 2, you get 1. Okay? So we know the x value of the vertex is 1. What is the y value? Just plug the 1 in here. So we have 3, 1 minus 3. I'm just plugging a 1 wherever I see an x, OK? 1 plus 1. And now I have 3 times 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 
and over here 1 plus 1 is 2. So the y value is going to be 3 times 2, it's negative 2, it's negative 6 by the way, negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. So we now have, we now have the vertex, okay? And once again, you can plug this in Desmos if you like to see if that's true. It's kind of fun. And the very last step, what's, what is vertex form? Since we have the vertex, what's the a value? Well, the a value is 3, and it was 3 here, and it's also a 3 even up here in the standard form. So the 3 is also going to be put right here. And then in vertex form, x, not plus 1, x minus 1, be careful of that, squared, minus 12. And here we have vertex form. Hope that hasn't gone too quickly. If so, please watch my other videos because I hate confusing people. It makes my job seem very unrewarding. Some of you may have watched the video I have on completing the square. Completing the square, it's a little bit of a tedious process, but it's something that most teachers want you to learn with this stuff. And when you complete the square, the cool thing is, is you're going to end up having your answer, in fact, in vertex form. It's going to take this thing and we're going to end up having vertex form. So that's the good part. The bad part is it takes a little while. So let's do that really quick here. What you do is you start by putting a bracket around the first two terms. So we have 2x squared plus 4x. Just put a bracket around the first two terms. 7 is on the end. It's still not vertex form though, as you can see. <clears throat> so now, um, factor out factor out the 2 here. Factor out the first term if you can, and we can. So t if we factor out a 2, we end up with x squared plus 2x bracket plus 7. So far so good? Okay, let's keep going. Now, Please watch the video I have on how to complete the square if this is completely new for you, okay? Because I have a video that shows how to do this with three or four examples and it goes much slower, okay? So the goal here is we want to take half of this middle term, half of it, so half of two is one, and then we're going to square it. So one squared is just one. But you can't just add 1 to an equation without also subtracting 1. Otherwise, you would mess things up. Okay? So, <clears throat> once again, you take the half of the, this term right here, this 2x, take half of it and square it. So half of 2 is 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. So that's great. And then you also have to subtract 1 to keep things legal in math, because you can't just add things without subtracting things to keep things balanced. You don't want there to be a disturbance in the force. No, just kidding. So, the next step, we have x squared plus 2x plus 1. We want to bring this, negative 1, outside these brackets to go meet the 7 here. You can't just put the negative 1 out here though because it's there's a 2 on the front. That means 2 times negative 1 is actually negative 2. So negative 2 is what's really going to meet the 7 here. Okay? So negative 2 plus 7 is 5. And why did we do what we did here? Whoops. Why did we do? We made, and another video I have on perfect square trinomials, we just made a perfect square trinomial here. And the perfect square trinomial, the rule for that is that when you're factoring these, all you do is Take the square root of the first and the last term. The square root of 1 is just 1. Take the sign that you see in the middle right here. If it was a minus sign, you'd put a minus here, but this is a plus sign. And square it at plus 5. And the cool thing is, we now have vertex form. Okay? We have vertex form here. We now know that this parabola, if you were to punch this into Desmos, you would see that the parabola has a vertex of not positive 1, but negative 1 and 5. If you want to push pause and verify that on Desmos, please feel free. Okay, I have another video that's really cool because it shows you how to get to this answer. 
this answer very quickly, okay? And I don't know, what did I call it? The video is something about how to avoid using, how to avoid completing the square. <laughs> In other words, I should call it how to avoid doing a lot of work. But here's a quick method, just for fun. I'm throwing this on the end. It's a special bonus. When you are given a quadratic equation, and it's in standard form like this. This is the A term, A, there's the 4, that's the B, and there's the C. All you have to do is use the negative B over 2A trick, the negative B over 2A formula, to find the X coordinate of the vertex. It's that quick. So you take negative B, which is negative 4, over 2 times the very first term. 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 times 2 is 4. And so we know the first term is negative 1. Now look how quick that is. Go look over here. Look how long it took us to figure that part out. Look at the very end. Here it is. Wowzers. Do you see how this is wonderful? Negative b over 2a, when you have something in standard form like this, you can use that to figure out the x value and then all you have to do is sub in that negative 1 where you see the x. And now we are going to take this negative 1 and we are going to place it wherever we see the x, right there and right there. Let's do that really quickly right here. So y equals 2 and then negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 plus 7. And let's quickly multiply that out. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 positive 1. And that times 2 is just 2. Now 4 times negative 1 is minus 4 and plus 7 on the end. So if you multiply or if you add all these up, 2 minus 4 is negative 2 and negative 2 plus 7, you're gonna get 5 here. And if you look at our last question, look at that. We did all of this work just to get the 5 that you see right here as well. Okay? See how lovely this is? I love this way. It's so much fun. So, I don't even know if you'll be allowed to use it because it's so quick and easy. Sometimes things are just not allowed to be quick and easy, it seems. But here it is, negative 1 and 5. There is our vertex. And now we can write this thing in vertex form. I'm so excited, I'm going to do it in blue. I don't know if you can even read this. The a value was 2, so I'm going to write the 2 there. And the vertex form, it's going to be x plus 1. Remember to do the opposite of the minus, squared, plus 5. Sorry for the mess, but there's our final answer. And if you look at this answer, try to memorize that. Let's go back and see if we had the exact same thing before. Indeed it is. Whoops, I think it is the same. It is. I was scared that the signs were different and I had made a mistake, but luckily I did not. And things are good. I just had to throw this huge bonus in. Now for those of you that were patient enough to watch the rest of this video, congratulations, you just learned a serious way that is fast, how to get the vertex form when you're given standard form. Okay, that is the end of this video and I think you will find this very useful as you do your math course. I wish you all well out there and I hope that soon enough we won't be dealing with talking with masks because it's been a bummer and this pandemic has not been easy on any of us. It's kind of cool that the whole world had to go through the same thing though. There's something special about us all being world citizens. Pretty cool. Anyway, I am off topic. This was not about that. It was about math and I apologize. Have a great day everyone.